Priest for his God and Father, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit, have unlocked for us the gates of eternity. Grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to France, the Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king saying, there is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat at, uh, on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he, that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength who do his bidding. Will 
teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Camera. <laughs> So we are still on our novena, awaiting the Feast of Pentecost this Sunday. We got one day to go. We have tomorrow is Saturday, and then we have Pentecost Sunday. And so I want to continue to reflect upon the Holy Spirit and this beautiful person, this divine person, the third person of the Trinity, who is given to us to be with us, to remain with us. You know. We usually associate the sacrament of confirmation with the Holy Spirit, as if it's the only sacrament that the Holy Spirit gets some credit for, when in fact the Holy Spirit is active in every one of the sacraments. When the priest is baptizing, he places his hands over the water, calls the Holy Spirit over the water, and it's the Holy Spirit that is washing the soul clean it's the Holy Spirit communicating the graces of God. It's the Holy Spirit making that indelible mark on the soul. And all that happens within that child, that person, is the work of the Holy Spirit communicating to that child, to that person, all the graces of Christ who conform them to Christ so that they might come to the Father. At Holy Mass, when I'm saying the Mass, you'll see at one point I place my hands over the gifts and I call down the Holy Spirit over the gifts. In the Eastern Church, they do this little flutter thing with their fingers to call, as they call down the Holy Spirit. I'm not gonna go fluttering, don't worry, but it, it, there's that sense of the calling of the Spirit over the gifts, and it's the Holy Spirit that transubstantiates the bread and the wine into the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, acting through the priest in the power of the Holy Spirit as he stands in persona Christi offering the sacrifice to the Father. In anointing of the sick, it's the Holy Spirit again at work, strengthening the soul, preparing the soul for death, or bringing them healing. In the sacrament of holy matrimony, when the sacrament takes place, and both are open to the spirit working of the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that's the bond of love, continually active in the sacrament of holy matrimony, just as is the Holy Spirit that when the bishop lays his hands on the man, ordains him a priest, the soul is changed and so forth, and the priest can then work in persona Christi, confecting the sacraments. And the same thing in the confession. It's the Holy Spirit working through the priest that allows the priest to say, I absolve you from your sins. That didn't count. It gives the priest that authority, the strength to do that. It's the Holy Spirit who brings that forgiveness of sins. So it's not like the only 
the sacrament that the Holy Spirit is involved in is confirmation. Certainly, he is the, how should we say it, the, the main character in confirmation, or the main one we focus on because it has so much to do with what he's doing in the soul. Now, there's a lot of talk today about confirmation being the moment where a young person gets to stand up and say they want to be Catholic. Eh, wrong, thank you for playing. That's not the sacrament. That's the Protestant understanding of claiming Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's not the sacrament of confirmation. In the Eastern Church, they actually confirm babies. On the day of your baptism in the Eastern Church, you are given baptism, confirmation, and Holy Communion. One shot, right then. Because those are the three sacraments of initiation. Confirmation is the second sacrament that we would normally receive and only the bishop can confer confirmation unless he gives the priest permission to do so. Like we all just got letters yesterday telling us that we can confirm anybody who needs to get confirmed during these days of the pandemic. <laughs> so, but we needed the permission from the bishop to do that. Because so that's why it was put on later in life, why we receive confirmation later, because the bishop had to be able to get around to all the parishes. Eventually, it became uh, hanging the carrot in front of the students to keep them in religious education uh, until a certain age. And in one sense, to confirm children at a later age is not good for them. My personal opinion is one of the reasons why our young people are leaving the church before confirmation is because they don't have the sacrament of confirmation. They have yet to be confirmed in the faith and have received all the gifts and all that happens in that sacrament. It's kind of like sending out soldiers into the battlefield in their underwear giving them no protective gear, giving them no ammunition to fight the battle. Our young people today are facing battles and struggles that our generations never had to face. In fifth grade, they're being introduced into, into pornography on the internet, fifth grade. They're becoming addicted in sixth grade to it. What they're being taught in schools, the secular culture they're living in, what they see in the video games and the violence being shown to them what's being taught them and by this culture. We expect them without the sacrament of confirmation to stand fast and to stand strong against this culture? I don't think so. Even those of us who are confirmed and have tried to maintain a holy life by going to confession often, going to mass as often as we can, if we're fighting and having a hard time, imagine our young people who don't have the sacrament. What does the Catholic Church say about the Sacrament of Confirmation? The Catechism says, and my video, have to, I'll have to edit that together. The Sacrament says, Confirmation, by which we are more perfectly bound to the Church and enriched with the special strength of the Holy Spirit. So we're more bound to the Church and we are with the special strength of the Holy Spirit. What are the fruits of the sacrament? The Catechism says that one of the fruits is an increase and deepening of baptismal grace. So all the graces we receive at baptism are increased and deepened at confirmation. Second, deepening of one's roots in divine affiliation which makes one cry out, Abba, Father. So the Holy Spirit strengthens our adoption that allows us to cry out to God, Abba, Father. Confirmation is the sacrament, the fruit that firms one unity with Christ. It makes that union we receive with Christ at baptism that much stronger. Here's interesting. Because we always say, oh, a confirmation, we receive the sevenfold gifts. We receive them at baptism. It says we receive an increase in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. At baptism, we already receive the sevenfold gifts. At confirmation, we have an increase of the sevenfold gifts. They're increased within us. 
That's why I say to deprive our young people, our teenagers, of the sacrament of confirmation is to deprive them of that increase of the sacraments, that, of uh, gifts that they need in order to persevere in this world. It strengthens one's bond with the church and a closer association with her mission. Is it any wonder why our young people who don't have the sacrament of confirmation stop going to church? Confirmation strengthens their bond with the church and their closer association with the mission of the church to proclaim Christ. We tell the young people, we want them to proclaim Christ, but we don't give them the Holy Spirit, the confirmation, that sacrament to do it. Another fruit, a special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ, to confess the name of Christ boldly and to never be ashamed of the gospel or ashamed of the cross. So confirmation gives us that strength to speak the faith boldly, to stand firm, to be strong, to not to be ashamed. And so when young people, when we don't have that grace, what happens? We can easily falter. Finally, it says the imprinting, as in baptism, of a spiritual mark, an indelible character of the Christian soul because of the character one can receive the sacrament only once in one's lifetime. So just as baptism and Priesthood mark the soul. Confirmation marks the soul with a special character. So if I can see your souls, you could see my soul. I would see the mark of baptism on your soul. You'd see baptism on mine. If you were confirmed, I'd be able to see the confirmation mark. You'd see mine. And if you could see my soul, you'd see the priesthood mark. That's why the three sacraments can only be received once. However, we see that confirmation really speaks about strength and unity. Unity with Christ, unity with the church, strength to stand up for Christ, strength to do the work of the mission of the church. This is why it's so important to make sure our young people receive the sacrament of confirmation. It's not just we get confirmed so we can get married in the church later on if we think it's a good idea. It's not about us deciding, okay, I want to be Catholic now, we'll get confirmed. That decision was made at baptism. When you were born again into Christ Jesus. Just as when you turn seven years old or 12 years old, don't think, okay, I want to be an American citizen now. Uh, you were born here, you're an American citizen. If you come here later, then you can choose, right? As many people, when they convert to Catholicism or Christianity, get baptized as adults. With the waters of baptism, we are born again. Confirmation seals the deal on it. Particularly that strength of courage. Of the sevenfold gifts of the Spirit that are increased at baptism, the most important is courage and fortitude. That fortitude, that strength to remain in the church, to be part of the church, to remain in Christ, and to fight for Christ. Not with fists, but with faith, with the true wisdom that comes from the Spirit. How beautiful how God gives us every grace to get to heaven, huh? Nothing lacking in God. Nothing lacking to us. There's no reason why we shouldn't be saints other than this dummy over here doesn't always want to be. We have to cooperate with the Spirit. Be open to his working within us. Stay in that state of grace. But God, in the gift of this holy sacrament, the Holy Spirit, specifically works so that we may be unified to Christ, unified to the church. That we might stand strong and reach the glory of the kingdom of heaven prepared for us since the foundation of the world. May God bless you and Mary keep you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. With real goodness we have this bread to offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Benedict our Pope Emeritus, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, why is the world and our sins? Lamb of God, who take away the sins of our sins. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of our sins. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
when the Spirit of truth comes. He will teach you all truth, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant we pray that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yesterday I ventured out to Home Depot for the first time and rather shocked this essential business which was deemed to be safe. I'm walking around, hundreds of people are in the store, parking lot's full. People are grabbing carts, walking. They're not cleaning the handles in the carts. They're just letting, putting them back. Nice person's taking them. They have these pla plexiglass between you and the register person, and she comes around the other side of the plexiglass to do the markings and hands me my card, takes my card back. And we can't go to church? I'm very confused by these directives. I'm not a stupid person. I may not be a scientist, but I think common sense would say that if you can do that, why were we allowed to go to church all those months? It was very, very strange, and I have to wonder what's going on there when I can go to Walmart or Home Depot where they're far less safer than the church, as we've been doing here. Uh, it's very confusing to me. <laughs> so, um, you know what they say about common sense, it's not so common anymore. But um, certainly let's pray that this foolishness, well not the foolishness, but this pandemic lifts and that there be some uh, fairness given to churches in many, many areas of the country right now that are not allowed to even go to Mass. So uh, pray for their religious liberty from this. If Walmart is essential and Home Depot is essential and they're doing what they're doing, I think we can do a much better job. And nothing is more essential than our eternal lives. So <laughs> let's keep praying for that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.